In recent years, we've made a number of trips to Fukui Prefecture in central Japan, as the region has been looking forward to welcoming the arrival of the Hokuriku Shinkansen bullet train from March next year. For us, those visits have usually meant blurry-eyed early morning departures from Tokyo Station on Shinkansen bound for Nagoya or Maibara in Shiga Prefecture to change there for trains to Tsuruga and the city of Fukui itself. When the Hokuriku Shinkansen arrives though, it will mean travellers from Tokyo can access Fukui Prefecture on a single train in under three hours, or around 30 minutes quicker than on currently available routes from Tokyo. In fact, completion to the extension of the Hokuriku Shinkansen route from Kanazawa in Ishikawa Prefecture to its new terminus in Tsuruga in Fukui Prefecture we'll see the creation of a direct train link from Tokyo to all the prefectures of a region known as the Hokuriku Sanken, the prefectures of Toyama, Ishikawa and Fukui. We last visited the region in March, with around one year to go until the extended Shinkansen route was scheduled to open. We started our trip in Fukui prefecture at the port of Tsuruga, before hopping on a rather spectacularly decorated minibus to Echizen City, a production centre for some of Fukui's and Japan's most celebrated traditional crafts, including Echizen washi paper, and Echizen Uchihamono forged knives. The Hokuriku Shinkansen will stop at Echizen Takifu Station, giving travellers access to the area. People have been making traditional Japanese paper or washi in Echizen for around 1,500 years. There's even a shrine here, Okamoto Otaki Shrine, dedicated to a goddess of paper known as Kawakami Gozen, the only such goddess in Japan, apparently. According to some of the paper makers here, the largely family-run paper mills of Echizen produce around 20% of Japan's market of handmade washi. We visited one paper maker, Igarashi Seishi, where they're also making washi from discarded fruits and vegetables, which they call food paper. A lot of Japanese people will throw away fruits and vegetables even if the shape is not right or even if it's just scratched. Craft master Masami Igarashi told us during our visit to the mill. Nearby, washi maker Yanase Ryozo Seishijo offers visitors the chance to try their hand at making Kanagata Rakusuishi, a rare kind of washi, the production of which involves pressing a pattern onto a wet sheet of paper using a metal mold. Water is sprayed over the mold in order to transfer the pattern onto the paper underneath. <laughs> this is perhaps the easier part for beginners. It follows the rather tricky business of using a sugeta to create the sheet of paper. The sugeta, a kind of screen attached to a hinged frame, is dipped into a vat of cold paper pulp, lifted and tilted with great care to spread the pulp, drain the excess and, hopefully, create something resembling a sheet of washi. It takes some getting used to, and is the kind of labour-intensive practice that makes Kanagata Rakusuishi something of a rarity. The arrival of the Shinkansen, though, could mean more visitors getting intimate with the paper and the process behind it.
On the second day of our visit, we headed north to the city of Kaga in Ishikawa Prefecture. At the Kutaniyaki Art Museum, Kutani Ware porcelain artist Shiho Aikawa talked to us about what she enjoys about the porcelain, which has been produced in the region for over 360 years and is celebrated for its bold designs and bright colours. I love the Kutani designs. I think they're amazing. The modern and the old. I feel like even the old designs can fit with modern lifestyles. That's one of the great things about Kutani wear, Aikawa said. Back on the road, we headed northeast to the city of Kanazawa. Kanazawa welcomed the Hokuriki Shinkansen back in 2015. During our visit in March, international tourists appeared to be coming back to the city following the easing of pandemic-related travel restrictions. Kanazawa Bikasari Asano is one of the stores owned by local gold leaf craft makers Hakuichi. The store offered a gold leaf craft experience where we could apply a gold leaf pattern to, well, any number of items. Alright, pull it up if my thing is stuck there. Oh, it's good. It's okay. 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 The city of Kanazawa probably needs no introduction to the traveller. And even before all of Japan's travel restrictions had been lifted, parts of the city, like the Higashichai district and Kenrokuen, were buzzing. We wrapped our time in the city though, with a dust walk around the city's old samurai district of Nagamachi. And this area was used by the family Maeda. And uh, the wealth of the higher ranked samurai was measured by how much rice they harvested mm. annually. Mm. Which proved to be a serene way to end the day. On day three, we crossed into Toyama Prefecture. wound our way up into the mountains to one of the World Heritage listed Gashozukuri villages of Gokoyama. Ainokura, population 40. First, they made washi. Japanese traditional handmade paper on the other floor in winter. The ingredient this was our guide and interpreter, Hitoshi Nakashima. Nakashima grew up in the city of Takaoka, with a population of around 165,000, the second largest city in Toyama Prefecture, and moved to Ainokura around 10 years ago after marrying into the village. Nakashima took us to the largest home in the village belonging to Shigeru Ikehata and his wife, who have opened up their home to visitors as an exhibition space and lodging called Yusuke. 
Inside, we drank tea by the Irori Half and watched a performance of the Gokoyama folk song and dance Kokiriko, which is said to be the oldest folk song in Japan, dating back around 1,400 years. Nowadays, we live with smartphones and laptops, but here we have nature and history. We think it's important for us to tell others about our history and our past through the things that still remain here, Ikehata told us. Like Fukui and Ishikawa, Toyama Prefecture also has an impressive lineup of traditional crafts and production centers that travelers to the region can visit and experience, including the Inami district of Nanto City, home to Inami wood carving. Carvers in Inami use only chisels and a mallet. Okay. No sandpapers. No sandpaper. Yes. There, there are several processes. Uh, this process is now rough carving. Rough carving. And the city of Takaoka, where the metal casting industry dates back to the early 17th century. We brought our trip to a close in fine style at the Wakamatsu Suburomaru Distillery in the city of Tonami. After touring the award-winning whiskey distillery, we of course said yes to tasting some of their award-winning brews. All the visits to Fukui Prefecture that I've been lucky enough to be a part of have shown to me just how rewarding a travel destination the prefecture can be. As part of the Hokuriku Sanken region though, along with Ishikawa and Toyama prefectures, I think it's fair to say of Fukui that it doesn't necessarily host the kind of marquee destination names that the other two prefectures do, where they have the likes of the city of Kanazawa, Gokoyama, and the uh, Tatayama Kurobe Alpen routes, among other destinations. But there are spectacular sites and locations in Fukui, including the likes of Eiheiji Temple, or the Nichijodani Asakura clan ruins, or Kumagawa Juku, all of which we've not been able to show you in this latest video because they weren't part of our last trip, which just goes to show you the kind of variety and extent of destinations that are awaiting the traveler in Fukui. So plenty of choice then, but also plenty of distance for the traveller to cover. So when the Hokuriku Shinkansen does eventually arrive in Fukui, the experience that it helps to deliver to both visitors and the people of the prefecture will likely be different to the experience it helps to deliver to Ishikawa Prefecture when the Shinkansen arrived in Kanazawa, I think it was in 2015. Fukui Prefecture, I think, arguably lacks the kind of plug-in-and-play experience that, say, Kanazawa can offer to Shinkansen visitors. A one-stop destination offering marquee attractions that can be covered on foot or a few minutes at a time by bus. With a variety of attractions in a variety of locations, the reach and accessibility of Nijikotsu or secondary transportation, I think is going to be something to keep an eye on in the case of Fukui. As you could perhaps see from the opening of this particular video 
our visits to Fukui have usually involved renting a car once we were at the destination. Still, I would say that the future looks really exciting for Fukui and for visitors to the region. Without a well-worn path of least resistance for the traveller to fall into, I would say a greater sense of discovery awaits in the region. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, don't forget to click on that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel and click on that bell for notifications somewhere so you don't miss when our next video drops. If you've been to Fukui or to the Hokurika Sankin region, share your experiences with the community in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, hope to see you for the next experience. Bye-bye.